I will ask uh, the town clerk to make a report, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I thought it was appropriate, since it is election season, uh, to give everyone an update where we are on voting, particularly absentee voting. Uh, also, there are several questions, frequently asked questions, of voters, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to share that with everyone. Um, first of all, the question that, that, believe it or not, we do get is, may I vote on election day? <laughs> do I have to vote? I, we do. Do I have to vote absentee? I prefer to go to the polls. There are several groups out there pushing for absentee balloting, and voters are getting very confused with that. And they call up or come in and say, can't I go to the high school on the second? They say, yes, we would prefer and love to see you there. <laughs> so again, we will be at the high school gymnasium Tuesday, November 2nd. The polls are open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, if you are a voter and you choose to vote absentee, absentee balloting is being conducted here at Town Hall in this room. We'll reset it when we're done tonight. Uh, Town Hall is open 7.30 to 5 on Mondays, 7.30 to 4, Tuesday through Friday. So again, this is set up if you uh, prefer to vote absentee or if you need to register to vote, you may do so here or at the polls um, on Election Day. Um, we have many questions. Folks ask if the voter list is evenly divided. They seem to think that they're the only ones standing in long lines at a certain time of the day. Um, actually, years ago, we used to put articles in, in some of the local newspapers on the counts um, by voter list to show them that it really does come out evenly. So I just thought I would share that again, that they do come out um, as evenly as we can get them. Um, a question that we have had lately because of um, the school board election specifically, uh, there are two seats available for council and two for school board. You'll see when you get the ballot, there's only one candidate on the school board. So we've had a lot of questions um, surrounding that. So I just wanted to touch on that a little bit. Um, one of the questions folks ask is, if the ballot says that there are two candidates and I only want to vote for one, may I do so? will this discount any other vote that I have made? And no, it will not. If you have properly voted your ballot, which is filling in the oval on candidates that are on the ballot, or say there are on the state ballot, there are four questions, say you only want to answer three, that will not discount the remainder of your ballot. And I think that that's an important point. We get that here when people absentee ballot, and we get it a lot at the polling place. I've only answered three of the questions, not four. That is fine. Specifically in regard to a writing candidate, and again, this would not be just for this election, but, but any election. The first thing that you need to do, like you do for a regular candidate, is fill in the oval next to the name. What that does is it shows the voter tabulation machine that that is the person that you want to vote for. In the case of a write-in, you have to go one step further and write a first and last name. So again, it would be filling in the oval writing in the first or last name. And again, with particularly again talking about the school board, if you only want to vote for one, whether it's a candidate on the ballot, or if it's a write-in, or if you want to write two write-ins, you may do so. Fill in the old name, first name, and last name. The other question folks ask is, what if I don't spell the name correctly? Let's take the instance of a first name. If, if Somebody has a name that they might be Patricia or Patty. They will take either Patricia or Patty. The last name obviously has to be the last name. If it's kind of a difficult name to spell, if we can tell the voter intent is that name and they've got some form of the first name, and particularly if it's an announced candidate, we will count that. Okay? Where it gets a little tricky is if somebody has a different first name but the same name of a candidate that has announced, we may have a, another voter with that name. We have an instance where there is a writing candidate, I believe, and, and their last name is not the only last name. There's several people in town with that last name. So that could get tricky. And it could be that somebody actually voted for another person, not necessarily that announced right in. So again, we look at it, we, we be reasonable. We always look at that if, if this was ever taken to the next level to the court of law, would it be reasonable that we counted or not counted a certain ballot? Voter intent, we can only go so far. Can't read minds, but we certainly can do a reasonable uh, job in determining if it was a particular candidate or not. 
But for a write-in, you have to also have the oval filled in Ab next to the name that you write in. Yes, and what that, thank you, what that does for the voter tabulation machine is it says, okay, this is the candidate. It also puts it in a separate bin that at the end of the night, we have to look in that bin to see if they're writing candidates or maybe ballots that the machines just couldn't read for some reason. So again, that in the case of a write-in, will direct that ballot into that other slot and we will hand tally it for that, hopefully just that race um, at the end of the night. Um, the other question that we've had is, will the school board results be available that evening, the evening of the election? I, I don't know. Um, my sense is that there are going to be a tremendous amount of write-ins, whether they're four announced candidates or not. Again, I'm afraid that some people will think that they have to um, uh, vote for two candidates, you know, a candidate on the ballot and a write-in for any of their votes to be counted. So we're trying to get out to the public again that as long as you vote the other ones properly, you don't have to vote for two if it says two. Um, so my sense is, I mean, we could have, a, I anticipate a few thousand voters and we could have just about as many in that right bin. I'm not sure it's reasonable to ask staff to stay till one, two, three in the morning to count ballots. I'll know better during that that day how things are looking and, and so forth. So I just, um, I know it's going to be hard for folks, but I, I think, you know, it's still staff and human beings, you know, um, that have to stay that late. And some folks just don't function well after midnight or whatever. I just, you know, <laughs> so I'm not sure. And would the quickest way for people to find out results be to look on the website? Yes, absolutely. I've already uh, touched base with our wonderful webmaster, Wendy Derzewick. She's going to wait up <laughs> for whatever results that I have that evening. And so we've already alerted the local newspapers and so forth and any interested uh, residents to be sure to look to the website for those results. So, so, so they, don't have to, if they don't have to call town hall right. the next morning yep. Yep, looking for right results. There. They'll, and we'll also, announce, we'll also announce that night if the, the counting of, of the municipal ballot um, will be the next morning, too. Okay. Are there any yeah, questions? I have, a, I have a question, Deborah. What about town hall on election day? Can you? Right. Michael and I uh, talked about it um, today, in fact. In, at the June primary, we experimented with closing um, the tax office, the town clerk's office, um, for election day. Uh, we just find that we need the staff on election day at the polling place, and it's hard to staff this office and the polling place. So Michael and I decided that um, November 2nd we will be again closing the town clerk's <coughs> office and the tax office for this staff to be uh, down to the polling place to help us out on election day. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Jim? Uh, Deb, um, can a person mount a sticker campaign? No. And what is that against the, basically these would be stickers that someone would affix to the ballot right. and then fill in the bubble but be very consistent in terms of the spelling of the person's name. Yep. It used to be, um, years ago, stickers were allowed at primaries. And at that time, at least in Maine, we didn't have the voter tabulation machines we do now. When we... Um, started to get the voter tabulation machines. We got our first one in 1987, along with Portland and South Portland. Um, the stickers jammed the machines. So can't uh, but they were never uh, not allowed for municipal um, anyway, so. Okay, thank you. So, if, I don't know if anybody, I have no idea, because I haven't been following it closely, but if anybody did have a sticker, they shouldn't put it on the machine, I mean on the ballot, but they might want to look at it for if, sure. I don't know if any candidates are passing out yeah. stickers or not, but they might want to look at it for the correct spelling okay. of the Thank name. You. Can they carry the card? I mean, it's a difficult name. Can they carry the card in? Yes. The yeah. They just, and if I may, one more thing. Um, for, there's a little bit difference now with a writing campaign for a state or federal office versus a municipal. The state law now is that if you are a writing candidate for a state office, you actually have to announce that, and there's a process to go through. And actually, at the end of the night, um, we only have to tally that number of those announced write-ins. And that write-in we can actually post at the polling place. For the municipal election, because those laws 
did not do not apply to Title 38, which covers the municipal. Um, the if there are any announced writing candidates for no matter what office, council or school board, for instance, or for water district trustee, mm -hmm. those will not be posted at the polling place. It is a conceived as a por form of um, influencing a vote, and I did triple check that today with MMA Legal. So, you know, just to make sure that law hadn't kind of gone over to the municipal side and not been announced. But. So any writing candidates for municipal elections will not be posted. As election officials, we cannot share that. We can't give first names, last names, what have you. I have another question. Um, if candidates are standing, you know, outside the polls, you know, how people sort of traditionally stand out there, if asked by uh, a citizen, can they tell them what their name is? They can tell them what their or name how to is. They, they can tell what their name is. They cannot. The trickiest thing is they can't tell them what they're running for. So, good morning. My name is Deborah Lane. Joe Citizen says, "So, what are you running for?" I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Well, if you're on the ballot, say announced candidate or a state writing candidate, you can say, "Well, these specimen ballots are there, and they can kind of direct them." But the tricky thing for a municipal writing candidate is their name will appear nowhere um, in the polling place. So, good morning, my name is, well, what, diff, you know, <laughs> what are you running for? I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Usually at that point they direct um, the folks to us, which is fine, either myself or the election warden, and we tell them the same thing, I'm sorry, we can't tell you either. So. Okay. Uh, and does that also mean then that candidates can't hand sticker out, hard out. Correct. There's no, There's no literature. Um, no literature within 250 feet of the polling place. Can, can they wear their own campaign button? No campaign buttons. Okay. Just checking. Yeah. Only a, a voter can if they're only coming um, to and front, you know, just to vote and then leaving. If they kind of hang around and kind of check out what's going on and whatnot, they would have to take off their button. But anything, anyone going to and from, they can wear their button no more than three inches, um, just coming and going to vote. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very thank much. You and, and thank you to your staff um, who worked very hard on our actions. Thank you. So we'll pass I look forward to the results. <laughs>